sound speeds. And if you're in the market for an inline microphone preamp for your dynamic or ribbon microphones, then pay close attention because I'm going to introduce you to one that uses a different style of amplification technology than those that are most commonly on the market. But before we get going, full disclosure, I think it's pronounced Valise has sent me the Mika in exchange for a fair and honest assessment. I do get to keep it following this review or assessment, but I uh, am not going to allow that to affect my opinion of this product. So let's get to testing it. Valise, Valise, the company behind the Mika, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, is a company out of Lithuania. And they have made this product here, which is a similar form factor to that of the Fed head that you might recognize. But unlike the Fed head that uses a Fed as an amplification circuit, this uses BJT style transistors. So the the claim that they have is that it makes it a quieter noise floor, and although it's a little bit more difficult to implement the circuit inside of a small form factor, it supposedly gives better noise performance. So we're going to test that in this video. Every microphone has a certain amount of self-noise built into it, and you can't really remove that unless you do a digital noise remover or digital signal process or something like that. It's not going to actually remove with something like the Mika or a Fed head. Now, the way those typically will boost audio is when you add something like 48 volts phantom power, it will increase whatever signal it gets. So if it gets a signal, it will amplify it, especially if there's a signal behind it. But if there's not a whole lot of a signal behind it, it's not going to boost it nearly as much. Therefore, a lower noise floor is going to be maintained unless you give it enough gain, and then it's going to use that to kind of push the gain up a little bit. So it's only amplifying technically when it has a signal behind it. So you put push a lot of volume through it, then it's going to increase it. But you don't push a lot of volume through it, it's going to maintain, you know, kind of a low noise floor. That's the idea behind it. But does the BJT transistors actually matter? Do they make a big difference? Let's test it. But first, let's talk a little bit about noise. Now, a while back, I did a video about nitpicking the wrong kind of noise, and you could watch it right there if you are interested. But what I will give you is the Cliff's Notes version now. And that is that if your environmental noise is here, your preamp noise is here, and your microphone noise is here, guess what you're going to be hearing in post? Your environmental noise because it's the loudest. But let's just say your environmental noise is here. Your microphone noise is also down there, but your preamps are noisy. What you'll want to do is bring down the gain of your preamps but then your gain isn't there. So you have to do something to increase the gain performance without increasing your noise floor. Therefore, you have your inline microphone amplifier right there. Using a similar technique to the one I used in my How to Measure EIN video, which you can also see at the end of this video, I am going to take a signal generator, generate a negative 50 dB tone, and then I'm going to amplify that by 50 dB in my Sound Devices Mix Pre 6. That will allow me to, in post, calibrate my analog dBU meter to my digital dBFS meter by basically taking the two of them and bringing up or down the levels until they perfectly match. Because a negative 50 dB signal, when you amplify at 50 decibels, it should be 0 dB. Therefore, if you calibrate them correctly, they should even out in post. That was my control, but I'm going to do the exact same thing with the Fed head, which boosts audio at 27 decibels, and the Mika, which boosts audio by 30 decibels. But I don't need to add 50 decibels with my Mix Pre 6. I can only add 23 and 20 here in order to boost the level up to 50 dB in post. And once I have my 50 decibels of gain supplied by here and the preamps in my Mix Pre 6, I'm going to be able to compare all of my signals from these two devices to that of my control. But once I set my gain correctly on the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 with my control and both the Mika and Fedhead, I'm going to replace everything downstream of these devices with a 150 ohm XLR dummy. This is going to allow me to measure the thermal noise or rather the noise floor. Basically, it's like plugging in a microphone, but with no audio signal going out. Therefore, it's just going to be the noise of the circuit going down the line, and that's going to allow me to measure the noise floor. Once I've recorded all my audio samples, I'm going to import them into my DAW, and then using the tone from the signal generator, I'm going to calibrate everything so that that way my analog and digital meters are exactly accurate. Then I'm going to listen and measure the noise floor. 
this is where the key part is going to come into play. Is the control from just the Mix Pre 6 going to be quieter or louder than the Mika? And is that going to be louder or quieter than the Fed head? There's our test. And this is the exact same procedure I used in my Got Clean preamps. Do you need an inline microphone amplifier video? Now we're in Isotope RX and we're going to start by looking at the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 control audio level. And I'm going to take a little scan of the middle of the tone generation portion of that. Turn on waveform statistics. And what we're going to be looking at is the total RMS level that is negative 16.82. So what this tells us is that when we took 50 decibels of gain added from the mix pre six, and then we subtracted from that the 50 decibels from the tone generator, that should even about zero dB. And it does in the analog world, but not in the digital world. What this level is showing me is how much gain I have to apply and add to our level here to make it zero dBFS. That calibrates our analog and digital meters. So what I'm gonna do is start off by adding 16.82 decibels, and then that's gonna show us that, that that's our starting point. So we're actually up this amount of gain. And now what I'm gonna do is take a little sample of the end of our audio recording. That's when I know that I had already boosted it up 76 decibels of gain to get our proper measurement out of it. And you can see that the total RMS level is negative 70.34. So I'm gonna subtract from that 70.34. And you look at that and say negative 53.52, that's not a very low EIN, Alan. Well, that's because we have to subtract our 76 decibels of gain to make up for what it was. Now, this is negative 129.52. In the past, I've measured this mix pre six at negative 30, 130.04. So it might have lost a little EIN over the years. I've been using it constantly. So that's still a very low noise floor. We're going to take that as our control. So negative 129.52. If our Mika and our Fed head are lower than that, then we're going to be in good shape. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Fed head and we're going to look at that. So we're going to take our audio sample here and we're going to look at this again the same way as we did before. And we're going to clear this out and say, well, negative 7.34. That is the amount of, of gain I would need to add, 7.34, to make this 0 dB. Okay, so now we're going to start with that. Now we're going to take this exact same measurement that we did before near the end. And we end up with our level of minus 48.34. Two, seven. Now let's subtract from that our 76 decibels of gain from the mix pre six. And whoa, that's pretty high. Well, the reason why is because the Fed head adds how much gain? 27 decibels. So we need to also subtract from that 27 decibels to compensate for the amount of gain added from the Fed head. That's 27 decibels. So one, negative 143.93. That's pretty low. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing for the Mika, and here is going to be the moment of truth. We're going to take our measurement here, and we are going to subtract from this 20, or add to this 12.4 decibels. Now, we're going to go over here toward the end, subtract, and take a measurement again of 44.12 equals negative 31.72. Now we're going to subtract from that 76 decibels and subtract from it another 30 because the Mika adds 30 decibels and we have a negative 137.72. So there's our measurements. They're the results of the testing that we did on screen right now, showing that the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 as our control had about a negative 129.5 decibel EIN. Below that is the Mika and below that is the Fed head. Now, if you perform these tests on your system or if I did it again on mine, it may show different results because results may vary based on the testing conditions and what you use and how you do it. So are these effective? Well, considering that the Mika and the Fed head both created noise floors below the theoretical minimum of EIN, I would say they're both very effective in our particular circumstance here. So is the Mika something you should look into? Well, that's up to you. But I would say it is definitely a very good contender for your money. If you're looking for a solid circuit that's going to give you low noise performance on your dynamic or ribbon microphones. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to turn the future for more testing, more deep dives on audio related topics, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.